Let's go. Yep. So what's good, homies? What's good? Welcome to another episode of the King Ray Ray Show. I'm your host, the Honorable King Ray Ray, here to do what I was put here to do once again for the men of the kingdom. Salute to your brother. Salute. GLG in the building. Money boy. Salute. Salute. Markel, what's good, young homie? Massa Mook, I see you, boy. I see you. Royal T, what's good, brother? What's good? Hassan Ball, what's good, man? What's good? Xavier Bright, I see you, man. It's Toka Bash. What's good, brother? I saw you in the building, man. Phil Brad, what's good? Cole Dean, what up, man? Let's get it, people, man. A couple of minutes to get in here, man. I don't know what's going on, man. Look like my uh look like my Wi-Fi signal kind of tripping a little bit, but we'll see. If y'all can still hear me loud and clear, we good, man. We good. Let me grab myself a bottle of water right quick, man. Let me grab myself a bottle of water right quick. Oh, all right. Here we go, homie. Huh, yeah, we back in the building. Tyler Jackson, what's good, homie? What's good? We back in the building. All right, man. Let's, let's get ready to do this, man. So this is a little bit. It's still the same type of content, but it's a little bit different angle than we normally take. Someone asked me how did I become a legend? And I said to them, I'm no legend. Just like in the, other, in the chat the other day, I was talking about, man, I'm not a goat. I don't want to be a goat. And the brother Mashara Rakuri came in and said, man, just accept it, man, you're a goat. But I, I said, man, I'm no legend. I may have said or done some legendary things, but I'm not a legend. And so I said to myself, you know what, brothers, that should be the focus of our lives. You don't need to be a legend to do legendary things. To someone, Clint Eastwood is a legend. To someone, Russell Simmons is a legend. To someone... Many famous, reputable men and women, for that matter, are legends. But think about the people that you don't know who have done legendary things. How do you become one of those people who does something very important in life? But not just to you, to others as well. So. To begin my new self-awareness series, today we will discuss how to become a man who does legendary things. You know what the greatest thing for me is for someone to say, listen, brother, something you said changed the way I view my life. Now, you normally say, hey, man, you changed my life, but I didn't change your life. I may have said something that caused you to view things differently, and then you changed your own life. But that's legendary. So let's talk about some of these things. Now, some of these words you're going to be familiar with, but we're going to talk about them from a different perspective than you're used to. And we may leave, we'll leave the chat open on this one for a little while. Now, first of all, if you can't accept who you are,
then you better make sure that you're your true self. Because nothing feels better than waking up and saying, oh, this is my true self. This is who I am. This is what I stand on. This is what I go by. This is what is this. So you may not be doing everything that everyone else is doing. You may not be capitalizing on things that everyone else is capitalizing on. Maybe you don't think that's in this type of capitalization. Maybe you think that is a waste of time. But that's based on who you are. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter who they want to be. It doesn't matter who they say you should be. You have to be who you are. And until you are satisfied and very pleased with who you are, you are not being who you're supposed to be because when you are who you're supposed to be, so many blessings come with that, that you will never not like being who you are ever. So let's talk about number one, desperation. Now, we know what desperation means on the surface. It means that, you know, you're kind of pressed to do something. You'll go out of your way to do something like you really need it. You're in dire straits. And so you're going to react in a way that you normally wouldn't. You're going to compromise some things. You're going to compromise your standards, your integrity. You're going to compromise your honor because you're living in a moment of desperation. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the type of desperation where you know you're not doing or being who you're supposed to be and then you wake up one day and realize man 10 years have passed 15 years have passed you were on a mission to be who you were supposed to be when you were 20 but now you're 35 and you haven't done anything on that mission heading in that direction since you were 25 so you went hard three years from 20 from 22 to 25 man you were on your way on your upper trajectory and then you lost it and now you look back on that desperation see that desperation can lead to one of two things it can lead to lighting a fire up under you where you're doing everything in your power to try to make up for lost time and if you get on the path that God wants you to be on, brother, you can make up for lost time. You can't do it on your own, but when you get on God's plan, on God's path, boy, anything possible on that thing, you can make up for lost time. Let me tell you something. If you've been going your whole life, messing over money, messing over money, and then you get, you get detached from any, any money-making opportunity for 10 years, and then you bounce back and get your mind right and get your mind what God wants you to be, man, and then you turn around, boy, and he drop you off into some man that dropped by five million in lap at one time. You, you think that's impossible? No, it's not impossible. That's an easy thing for the most high right there. So that desperation is what the, the, the fear of that desperation is what should make you never fall off track. See, if you never fall off track, if you always stay on the path you're supposed to be on, if you always stay on your mission, you're going to do something legendary along the way. But if you're not even on the path you're supposed to be on, you ain't going to never even sniff anything legendary. You ain't going to sniff anything. Man, listen, I ain't got to be a household name. All I need to be is remembered by the people whose lives I affect in a positive manner. If there's a hundred, cool. If there's ten, cool. Desperation is when you look at your life and you start comparing your life to your peers' life in a realistic way. We're square is square. Y'all all started from the same point and you've wasted time. Brothers, if you are younger than 40 right now, get on the ball. You still have time to get on the ball. But you got to stop thinking you know life. And in that moment of desperation, when you look up and realize you've been wasting time, that is the time that you want to just, oh, I got to go fast. No, you got to slow down. And you got to watch your steps. And you got to make sure that you're on the path that God wants you to be on. Because going fast and jumping out the path, that's what got you going in the direction you're going in now. That's why you're so far away from where you need to be. That's why you're so far. I mean, listen, you're so far away from where you need to be that you're far away from where you need to see. 
You can't even see where you need to be. So you don't have time to waste anymore. The number two thing, and this is one of the things that will happen to you when you face with this, 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 this desperation. You know what you'll do? You'll fall into deflection. You know what deflection is? Man, it ain't my fault. Man, somebody was holding me back. Man, I don't know what to do. Man, them people over there hating on me. Man, my family don't want me to win. Bruh, that's okay if you're 20, if you're 40, if you're 30. I don't know about one here. You talking about your family don't want you to win? Man, I've been working hard. I've been going hard, man. You don't know nobody work harder than me. You're working hard, but you know you're not working smart. You know what working smart mean? Working smart don't mean finding shortcuts. Working smart mean working on the thing that God put you here to do. We're talking about from a spiritual perspective now. Working hard, but working dumb, it don't matter. You're working yourself, to, you're working your fingers to the bone. But if you're working smart, then you in the position that God wants you to be in. Working smart is working for God. Working dumb going to get you some crumbs. And nothing's ever been rid of that where I come from. You have to keep it moving, man. You have to keep it moving. Listen, man, we got a show coming up at 6.30 on the BOA channel, man, where we're going to talk about uh, Ray J and Prince's love, man. He, he, he tried to divorce her three times. She talked him back into it. Now she done divorced him, and she's serious now. We'll talk about that tonight, man. We'll talk about how to maintain a household. With a good woman. And we'll also talk about how to know that you should think your woman good, but she not. But back to the topic here, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, man. Y'all go set your timer. So when you're deflecting, no one can give you any information. No one can tell you that, hey, man, listen, man, you need to get on track, dog. Man, what happened, man? When we, like 10 years ago, you were on the ball, man. What happened? Man, you don't know what's good. You don't know what I go through, man. You don't know what it is. I'm still on track, man. You just hating on me. You don't know what's in my pocket. You don't know what I'm doing. You don't know where I've been. You don't know how my relationship with God is. You don't know what I'm focused on. You're doing all that deflecting. You know what? Because now you're dealing with deniability. Everything is open for your denial. Are you where you're supposed to be? Yep. Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Yep. Well, look at these results right here. These results say, man, that, it, that man, you've been wasting time. Man, I ain't been wasting no time. Man, you've been blowing money. Man, I ain't been blowing no money. Man, you've been hanging out with these. Man, I ain't been hanging out with them. Man, you've been going over there with those bad people. I ain't been going over there. Man, you've been hanging out here with them lazy people. Man, I ain't been going over there. Got you on camera. Man, man, that ain't me. As long as you live in a position of deniability, where you're denying your own responsibility for your plight in life, you will never do the things that you want to do. You will never get back on the level playing field that you need to be on where you can and will do legendary things. You need to be there. You need to be focused. You need to be determined. You need to be in the position to win at all times because you never know when the whistle's going to blow. I say again, you need to be in the position to win at all times because you never know when the whistle's going to blow. You never know. You're in denial if you think you got forever to do things. You're in denial if you think you're going to live long enough to accomplish me. You're in denial to think that, you know, somebody owes you something. You're in denial to believe that you don't deserve punishment and repercussions and consequences for your actions. You're in denial if you believe that God won't give you the blessing that he promised you in Deuteronomy 28 if you live that life. You're in denial if, believe, if you believe that God don't put the, won't put the curses on you that he promised you in Deuteronomy 28 if you don't live the life you're supposed to live. You're in denial. 
You're in denial if you think you're not responsible for your own life. You're in denial if you now you think you're not responsible for your own decision. You're in denial if you think somebody's supposed to lead you around by your hand and show you everything that you already know and convince you to do it. You're in denial if you think somebody care enough to put the to hold your feet to the fire and make you do what's best for your own life. How so? Who owes you? What makes you so great that we owe ourselves? So we owe ourselves, we're supposed to give you something too? Let me tell you something. We only have enough for ourselves. We don't have enough to give and share with you. We only have enough for ourselves. That deniability is number four, delusion. You have delusions of grandeur. You think that you're going to laze your way into the life you want. You think that you're going to hope your way into the life you want. You think that you're going to wish your way into the life you want. You're like a gold digger. You believe that you can live whatever life you want to live. And somebody, at some point, somebody's going to come whisk you away. Even with that history, somebody's going to whisk you away and give you that, put you in a lap of luxury. That's how you think it. But you're here you are. You're a man of God, supposedly. And you sit around here believing that somebody's going to whisk you away and put you in a lap of luxury. You're going to have to get on the track that God wants you on. You will not achieve your goals. You will not reach the people you're supposed to reach. You will not get the grand reward of having people saying to you, man, you have helped me change my life. You have benefited my life in ways I know that God is using you. When someone says, man, I know that God is using you because the word that came through you changed my life for the better. I applied it to my life and I know that that came from God. Don't you want some of that or do you just want to sit around on the back burner looking crazy? it for the rest of your life what do you want to do you got this focus on get money get money get money get money get money uh, get more money get more money so you have a financial you have a financial security but you're in spiritual obscurity you don't even know your spirit man nobody knows your spirit man you wonder why everybody look at you and just want to use you for money because that's all they know you for you want to buy everybody to take your kindness for weakness because that's all they know you for is money. Nobody values your money. People value how you affect their lives the same way you will value how people affect your lives. Somebody can give you a million dollars. Okay, that's a million dollars. That's cool. You go make something happen. But somebody can rescue you from drowning in the ocean and you will never forget that. Never. If somebody gave you a thousand dollar twenty five years ago, man, you don't remember that. They may come up to you and say, "Man, you you still owe me a thousand dollars." Boy, you ain't never gave me a thousand dollars. Y'all ain't fish to cuss because you think they making stuff up. But that person who said, "What's good, brother? You doing good?" Ever since I said you life from them sharks. Oh man, yeah, man. Let me tell you something. I'm still having a nightmare about them sharks, though, man. I don't eat me fish no more, man. Mess around with them sharks. You you ain't gonna never forget it. Why? Because that was something that benefited your life, not something that benefited your existence, something that benefited your life. See, life is what you live. Existence is what you experience. Life is what you live. God didn't breathe the breath of existence into you. He breathed the breath of life into Adam. So we talk about your life versus your existence. You too busy focusing on your existence, and then you start focusing on your existence. So 10 years go by, and you ain't been focusing on your life. What's your life? Your life is your mission. Your life is your mission. What does God want you to be doing? I can tell you what. I can t God don't want you to be out here focusing, focusing on making money any way you can. Too many pitfalls with that. Too many pitfalls. So with that delusion comes a disdain, but not a disdain for everyone else. A disdain for doing the things necessary. You know what, you know, you know what laziness is? You know what slothfulness is? It's just a disdain for doing the work necessary. Show me somebody lazy. I show you somebody has a disdain for working. They want to eat, but they have a disdain for the work it takes to feed themselves. They want to live comfortably, but they have a disdain for the work it takes to live comfortably. They want to drive something nice, but they have a disdain for the work it takes to drive something nice. They want to be blessed, but they have a disdain for the work and dedication to the most high it takes to be blessed. They want to be a leader, but they have a disdain for the work it takes to learn the principles of leadership in order to be a leader. 
They want to be. They have a dis. They, they, they want to be a husband, but they have a disdain for the the leadership and responsibilities and provision and protection that come with being a husband. They've been told that if you provide and protect even for your family, then you're a weak man. They want to be a wife, but they have a disdain for the qualities and the submission and and, and the and the shut up and is that obedience that comes with being a wife. They have a disdain for those things. You have people all over the world who want all of these things, but they have a disdain for the mission. They have a disdain for the position. They have a disdain for the inquisition. They have a disdain for all of these things, including the decision to do what's necessary. There's no greater disdain loan to mankind than to have a disdain for doing what's necessary to get what and where you want to be. No greater disdain in the world, man. Got my brother SJ3 in the building, man. My, my mod squad is, is my squad, compadre D. Flemings. Famo, salute to you, man. Got a couple of brothers that fell up in here, man. I appreciate y'all being in a joint, man. Leader, the producer, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, bruh. Appreciate all you brothers sliding on in here, man. Let's get ready to do this. We in here, man. We in here. So when you think about these things, man, I want you to think, this is, the, the, we always talk about games. Listen, you, you, know why, you know why I don't watch sports? Here's why I don't watch sports. Because I'm already playing the game of life every day. Every day I'm playing the game of life. I don't have time to sit and watch some guys who are in wonderful positions and playing the game of life. I don't have time to sit and watch them playing a game for hours, taking time away from my playing the game of life with no benefit. There's no wisdom, understanding, and knowledge coming from watching that. There's no information on how to build infrastructure in your house, in your community, in your neighborhood. There's no, there's no information about how to grow your wealth. There's no information. That is a dead zone in your life where you stop living the game of life to watch these guys live their game of life and get paid for it while you're doing nothing. That's just why I don't do it. If you do it, fine. I don't knock anybody who does it. I don't do it, and that's my reason. Not because I look at it and say, hey, man, that's not. It is very entertaining. I'm not saying I've never watched, but when I used to watch, it was very entertaining. But you know what I realized? And, and, and I, mean, I mean, from the time I was, I was young, really young, from like teenage years, I watched. I grew up watching MJ. Greatest scorer in the history of the game, by far. But the games were short then. Now the games be going on for like three hours. All the commercials and the halftime and the halftime show and, and, and all this other stuff that be going on. Bro, I don't have three hours to dedicate to that. That's three hours. Listen, if you got 24 hours in a day, 24 hours in a day, let's say you spend, let, let's be generous. You spend an hour in the gym. Let's say you get your eight hours sleep. That's nine. Let's say you spend eight to ten hours. Let's say eight hours. Let's be on the safe side. You spend eight hours doing whatever you got to do to get money. That's 17 hours. You, you say, let's say you eat three meals. Let's say you eat three meals and you spend, let's say, 30 minutes eating each meal. That's another hour and a half. You see what I mean? It's adding up. Then if you got to drive somewhere to go to work or wherever you do to make money, yeah, go to work. We all work to say that. Then let's say you got an hour there, an hour back with, with traffic. That's two hours gone. You mean to tell me you got three hours in any one of your day to throw away on something like that? I don't. I'm too busy trying to make sure I'm still on my mission, though. I'm too busy trying to make sure I'm still on my mission. I got to be on it. Though. I don't have the time to waste. And listen, and even when I try, even when I try, I mean, it's even with something like the Super Bowl, I, the most I can watch is the fourth quarter. And I don't mean the whole fourth quarter. I mean like the last 10 minutes of the game. If it's, if it, if I, if I, you know, cause it's on everywhere. So, you know, if the score pops up on my phone, pops up on, on, on my computer or, or whatever I'm doing, if the score pops up and it's tight, I'll watch the last eight to 10 minutes of it, you know, and you know, maybe in overtime if it goes into it, if it turns to a nail biter of a game, but that's only about total about 30 minutes. 
with 10 minutes left in the game with the commercials and timeouts and all that, that's about 30 minutes. I can give 30 minutes to some. Man, I go, listen, man, I spent 30 minutes, man, you know, in the, in the bathroom, man, relieving myself, you know, of, of solid waste, bro. I, I spent 30 minutes doing that. But so 30 minutes is not the same as three hours. You got to understand, you got to think about how you live your life because you'll do that and then you'll start thinking about the demands. Listen, there's always demands on your time. There's always demands on your grind. There's always demand on your shine. There's always demands on your mind. There's always demands on your physicality. There's always demands on your mentality. There's always demands on your emotionality. There's always demands on your spirituality. There's always demands on your financiality. There's always demands at all times, but you know what happens? when you have a disdain from the delusion that came from the deniability that led from the deflection that all started with the desperation then those demands have a way of driving you to do things that people tend to do what do they do the weekend comes they can't wait they out they drinking they partying they have a good time they're trying to get over these things in their life that have caused them issues because they're not in a position to do legendary things so what does everybody do focus on our own personal gain i got more money than you why well, i got more money than you why well, i got a better car than you why well, i got a bigger house than yours well i got two houses so you're one well it don't matter well i got some crypto well it don't matter well i got this many stock in this well i got this we focus on these materialistic things because no one is in a spiritual position to do anything legendary. No one wants to do anything legendary, so we just focus on making money. Think about this. In what competition does everybody do the same thing? You think about a society where everybody's focused on doing the exact same thing, but very few people are focusing on living a life that's pleasing to God. You, you know how you know spiritually how I view these things if everybody's doing it it's not what God loves it's not what God approves of the fewer people who are doing it the more likely it is to be something that the most high approves of that's just the way this world goes the goal is to stay out of the rat race That's the goal. I see somebody mention the rat race. Man, listen, the goal is to stay out of the rat race. The rat race never stops because you never stop eating. I want y'all to look up rats. You know, you know why rats are always eating through things? They have to to keep their, key, their teeth from growing through their jaw. Their teeth never stop growing. As long as they're alive, their teeth grow. So they have to bite on things to wear their teeth down. They have to gnaw on things to wear their teeth down. That's just what they have to do. And so when you put yourself in that rat race, you live in the same race, man. You just always gnawing on some, always chewing on some, always chasing something to chew on, always chasing something to eat, always chasing some food. You know how, you know, you know how we're using the, 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 one of the synonyms for getting money, man, is eating. Man, we out here eating. We eating out here. Yeah, that's all you do is eat. We eat and we exercise our body, but we don't exercise our spirit. You, the goal is to exercise your spirit. That's how you do something legendary. If you're constantly exercising your spirit, you're going to hit a PR from time to time. Same way if you if you constantly exercising your body, you hit a PR. What's the PR? Personal record. If you're in there lifting, 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 eventually you're going to hit a personal record. going to be the most you ever lift. The same thing with your spirit, man. If you're out here working, working, working on your spirit, man, eventually you're going to hit a personal best. You're going to hit a personal record, and you're going to do something legendary you're gonna do something that most people have never seen you're gonna do something that most people don't even want to do because they don't even think about doing these types of things i want you to understand that god has a plan for you and anything you're doing outside of that plan is irrelevant nothing you're doing outside of god's plan for you has any bearing on what you should be doing in his life i mean i mean what you should be doing not the things you want to do the things you should be doing because when those demands man listen those demands will wear you down if you're not taking care of them from day one so when you start on your journey for the most high stay on your journey for the most high because if you fall listen think about this it's like this think about working out you're working out you're going hard man you're working out then you take six months off you take six months off but what you do you go right back in there and try to pick back up with the waist that you left off on six months ago. 
You're going you, you're gonna to take a trip to Snap City. You're going to snap some up. You're going to break some. You're going to hurt some. You're going to injure yourself. Why? Because you can't take time off if you want to stay in perfect condition. Spiritually, you can't take time off from living a life that's pleasing to God. You can't take time off from applying the statutes and commandments to your life. You can't take time off from staying away from foolishness. You can't take time off from staying away from wickedness and crazy people. You can't take time off from doing those things that you know are conducive to you being the best version of yourself. You can't take time off because when you take time off, you go back. You can't take time off and pick up where you left off. It, listen, even if you slow down, you can't take time off. Now, by taking time off, see, listen, if you're going hard in the gym, man, and you take a week off, you, you need that week to recover. So, at some time, you got to take a week off. I Listen, I've known uh, bodybuilders, compete, competitive bodybuilders who took two weeks off. Now, I don't want to take as much as a month off, but those guys, were in, they, I mean, they work out for a living. That's their lives. They work out for a living. But if no, we don't work out for a living. But you have to stay on point. You cannot decide that, okay, I'm just, because when you take time off, what do you do? See, a bodybuilder takes time off. They're taking time off from lifting. They're not taking time off from everything or just going to eat a whole bunch of pizza and cake and pies and all of that. They pretty much stand on top of their diet. They're just taking some time off from working their body so hard. You, when you take time off spiritually, you don't just sit around and then don't, there's nothing else to do because if you're not feeding yourself spiritually then you are losing yourself spiritually and so when you take time off from being the best version of yourself when you take time off from being the version of yourself that the most i want you to be you fall out of the rotation and then when you try to pick it back up it's hard because you have forgotten the details you've forgotten the details You've forgotten the structure that comes with it. Why? Because all of those elements of structure have been filled with elements of lack of structure. You go from having a structured life to having a destructive life. You go from having a detailed, buoyed life to a destroyed life. And when you pick it back up, everything is a mess. Everything is in shambles. Why? Because you left it that way. Let me ask you something. If all the food that you want to eat is inside of your house, why are you going to be hungry and then leave your keys inside and lock yourself outside and sit out there and complain about being hungry? Tell me where that makes sense. If you know you need gas in your car, but you're hungry at the same time. Now you're riding on fumes. Your car's starting to... You're right here at the gas station, but you're hungry too. Are you going to pass the gas station to go down there and get some food and let your car run out of gas? You're going to be full, but your car going to be empty. No, you're not going to do that because that's a lack of paying attention to detail. That makes no sense. And when you live your life like that, you're constantly going to be going on a roller coaster ride. Your life is going to be up and down. It's going to be up. You're going to give up. It's going to go down. You got to push it all the way back up to the top. Once you push your life up to the top of that hill, to the top of that mountain, why would you just let it roll back down? Because the roller coaster ride, when I'm saying your life is like this, it ain't like that. Your life is like this. Top of the hill, back down. Top of the hill, back down. Top of the hill, back down. It's not even a roller coaster. You're not going forward. You're not making any progress. You must take control of your life. I don't mean play with it. You got to take control of your life. You, listen, when you're facing something and you know you shouldn't do it, and you know it's going to be detrimental, just look at it and say, I know you want me to do it, but I'm too strong to do it. God gave me too much strength to do it. So you got to be able to look at it and say, no, I ain't going to do it because you know what? There's other options to do other things. There's always other options to do other things. You don't have to say, okay, I'm going to do that thing I shouldn't do or nothing. No, nope, I'm not going to do that thing I should do. This thing over here is better for me. This thing over here bodes well for me. This thing over here benefits me. It's not detrimental to me. So I'm going to go over there and do that thing. That's how you have to live your life. That's how you take control of things so you won't be stuck in that desperation.
Then you got to deal with the deflection of knowing that you're in the desperation. And then you got to deal with the deniability of believing that you didn't put yourself in that situation. And then you got to deal with the delusion of thinking that somebody going to bail you out of that situation. And then you got to deal with the disdain of knowing that it's on you. You the one got to do it. You the one got to do the work. You the one got to build yourself back up. And then you got to deal with the demands because once you realize that you got to do it, that's when you turn back to those demands and be like, oh my God, look at this load that I left. Look at all of these things I got to do. I should have just stayed on my path, man. What I came off my path for, hey, man, stop all that crying. You came off for it because you wanted to come off for it. Stop all that crying and get back on your grind. You weren't crying when you was enjoying the ride back down that mountain, having all that fun, doing all those things, losing that lack of focus. You ain't had nothing to focus on. You ain't had no hard work to do. You ain't had to do nothing. You just roll on back down that mountain. You weren't crying then, so don't cry now. Then with that disdain, man, after you realize the old demands, then you got to focus on the details. And let me tell you what happens on, when you focus on the details. Then you get back into domination. Dominating your life. If you want to dominate in life, all you got to do is focus on the details, man. You will dominate every situation. You will dominate every circumstance. All you got to do is focus on the details and make sure that you are doing the small things in life. Small things in life. Make sure, you know, make sure your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. Otherwise, they all look like I's without dots and T's without crosses. You can't tell which is which. Both of those are things that you can't, you, 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 hell, you can't read a letter that has no dotted I's or crossed T's on it. That's how you get into dominating your life. Because you can compartmentalize what's over here. You can compartmentalize what's over there. You can compartmentalize what's back there. You can compartmentalize what's up there. You're looking at your life and everything is where it's supposed to be. You know what happens then? You start to dominate life. You start to dominate life. You start to look out and you say, okay, I'm going to do this because I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that because I've already been working on that. I'm going to do that because that's going to happen. I'm going to do that because I already know. I already planned that. I already put that plan in motion. Then you start dealing with life from a level of confidence. You start looking at things and you start really truly believing that everything you touch is going to be successful. Why? Because you've done those four things and you've done them to the best of your ability and you've dedicated yourself to them and you put everything you had into it and so you believe that anything you touch if you put that kind of effort you start to understand that you have the type of effort focus determination and drive that can make anything successful that's why you don't fall off it's hard to get to that level it's too hard to get to it for you to be getting to it coming back down the mountain Man, you crazy. It takes so much work to get to that point where you start touching things in your life, man, and everything you touch start turning into gold. Everything you touch start having some level of success. Everything you touch start making progress. Everything you touch start making people feel good and change people's lives. Everything you touch start bringing some positive energy to the world. Everything you touch starts to build men. Everything you touch starts to build family. Everything you touch starts to build community. Everything you touch starts to change people's your relationship with the most high. Everything you touch starts to make people live lives that are full of peace and giving them peace of mind but don't you want to be in that well guess what don't fall off of it when god give it to you it's a blessing to be in that position man too much of a blessing for you to let it go the goal is to dominate in your life not do what they're doing they're gonna try to tell you to do what they're doing they're gonna try to tell you to buy this and buy that and live this and live that and man and then dress this and dress that man we on a bigger mission than that foolishness we on a bigger mission than to fit into popular culture we don't care about pop culture we on a bigger mission we're on a mission for the most high man what are we talking about All this rigmarole we do over here, man, you go to other cultures, man, you look, you look crazy. You look like a clown. 
And listen, and even in this culture, once you get outside of pop culture, once you get outside of hip hop culture, you realize that those are very small pockets of people. The majority of people in this country who are doing things, who have families, who have generational wealth, who have huge expanses of families that are helping one another build things, who are living co-op family environments, who are all living on one big compound, like one big family, who are building their own community with their last name. Those people don't care nothing about no pop culture. The only people who care about pop popular culture of people who have no family, people who have no heritage, people who have no lineage, people who have no direct connection to anything that is based on the earth itself, people who have attachment to things that are catered to their mind, catered to their five senses, things that come from social media, things that come from online, things that you can't do nothing with, things that change year after year. Let me tell you something. Why would I live a life based on things that change year after year when one thing that doesn't change? The seasons of the year don't change. I'm going to attach myself to the earth. I'm going to attach myself to what's real. Just like those seasons don't change. Let me tell y'all something. I don't care what happened. It's the end of February. Two weeks from now, no matter where you are in the South, you can go hit the bank and you're going to catch some crappy. Every year of my life that have, I have been living, that thing has not changed. That water temperature hit a certain point. Them fish on the bank, baby. They're going to be right there every single time. About halfway through daytime, you're going to have to worry about some catfish missing in there with them. Then right before their time, right at the right before their time, people out there catching bass. So in the beginning of the crappie, people still catching bass. But at that time right there, people fishing for bass are starting to catch big crappie with those crappie, with those bass lures. Why? Because the big crappie are starting to come in. Halfway through there, when the regular size crappie start coming in, all the big ones are gone, then you got to worry about those catfish in there. Then when you get through that, on the back end of that, once the catfish are finally done and all the crappie are going back out, then the brim start coming in. I'm telling you, it happens every year of my life. And you know what that means? Means, that means that if you're not attached to the earth, you don't even know how you're living or what you're living. That's why you're so focused on things that, okay, you know, you got people, man, that base their winter time on what clothes they're going to wear. They base their summertime on what clothes they're going to wear. You got people, man, who waiting for the summertime so they can buy a drop top car and ride around and not see the world. Be seen by the world. Boy, let me tell you something. I don't care how beautiful you are. I don't care how handsome you are. I don't care how pretty your car is. You and your car and your clothes are ugly compared to the beauty of the world. When I'm in Miami, man, you think I'm down there trying to be safe. I may be down there drop topping, but I'm down there drop topping because it's hot. You get a chance to let the sun bake on you. Boy, you get that vitamin D when you're in, when you're in the MIA. Man, but when I'm down there, boy, man, I'm not worried about looking good and flossing and doing all that. Boy, I'm in an area that looks... Boy, if you just look at it, I'm talking about don't go down to South Beach now. Don't go to tourist traps. Go to go to Coconut Grove. Go look at Coconut Grove, man. Boy, let me tell you something. One of the most beautiful places you'll ever see. When I'm out in Cali, man, I don't go to L.A. I go to San Diego. Or I go to Seal Beach. Or I go to Malibu. I'm not trying to go to Beverly Hills. I don't, I don't shop in Beverly Hills. I'm not trying to go to Rodeo Drive. I don't shop there. I don't care nothing about that. I'm trying to see the beauty of the world. I might go to Big Bear, spend some time in Big Bear. When I go to Kenya, man, you think I'm going there to eat food and take pictures of food? No, man, I'm going there, man, so I can go to Mombasa and just smell the ocean on the coast of Kenya. I'm going to slide over to Tanzania and go to Zanzibar. Island of Pembe, if you want to be precise. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to Mount Kilimanjaro. I'm going to the Ngorongoro Crater so I can see the, the, the expanse of land that has the most predators of anywhere in the world. So there's the most lions, the most cheetah, the most leopard, the most hyenas anywhere in the world. The biggest concentration of, of predators is right there. That's where I'm going. I was going to the Maasai Mare, but not. Man, boy, I'm going. I go to see the world. Boy, don't you know this guy, this girl that God made? Man, listen, boy, you got to be attached to the most high. The fulfillment of the world is such an amazing thing. Man, let me, boy, God will give you everything your heart desires if you just stay steady. There is nothing my heart desires, man, that the Most High has not given me. I'm talking about even all the way down to the untouched wifey, boy. I'm blessed, and I want you to be blessed like that. But I'm telling you, you got to stay steady. 
You got to not let the ways of the world pull you to the wayside. You got to not let the joys of the world pull you to the wayside. You got to not let the thrills of the world pull you to the wayside. You got to not let the people of the world pull you to the wayside. Man, let me tell you something what happened. After you get to that domination, then you start to live with distinction. You know what distinction is? You know what distinction is? Distinction is when the people around you recognize your positive effect on the environment and the people in the environment. Even if it's nothing more than when you come around, you're dropping gems on everybody. You start to live a distinct life. In here right now, when we see D. Flemings, we know, we know that's FAMO. You understand? How many times you seen UK Prince? How many times you seen D. Flemings? We know Markel is the young homie. Tell me we don't. This is distinction. You could be anywhere else in the world right now. You could be at a ball game right now. Don't nobody know who you are. Look at, listen, even Fixed You see Fixed Crypto. We see Fixed Crypto in, in and out of the GLG. We see him in the, in the GLG on the BOA channel. When you ride through this thing, man, you get an opportunity to see. We know who Harlem World Breaker, AKA. Listen, he changed the name to Harlem World Breaker and he knew he had to put AKA SJ3 because in here, SJ3 is a distinct name. We know SJ3. We know Hollow World Breaker now, but we have always known SJ3. This is what distinction is. The money boys. We know who the money boys are when we see them. We know what that means. I'm telling you, brothers, that you get to live a life of distinction where people recognize you for the quality, not of your car, not of your clothes, not of your job, not of your house, not of your money, but of your spirit. People start to recognize you as a man who has a strong, godly spirit. And you know what you do to them? You give them hope that they can live a better life and be a better person. And not get caught up in the rigmarole that most of them will ever reach. You know how many people that make average salary are out here trying to live like celebrities? Killing themselves out here living like celebrities. I'm talking about going in major debt out here trying to live like celebrities. Thinking that they should look like rich people look. Problem is, they never see those rich people at home. You know what the rich people have on their crib? Some sweats, some warm ups, a pair of jeans with some slides, some Crocs. You know what I'm saying? A pair of gym shoes with some, with, with some, with some, some, uh, some denim shorts or uh, something. You know, a dicky suit. That's what they have on at the house. But you at your house with all these red bottom shoes in there that you got to pay for out of pocket. Trying to live like people who aren't even living that way. You look at those people, career, man, you go out, man, they live on farms. They got their own vineyards and trees in the backyard, man. Everything they eat come out of their yard. And you around here trying to go to these restaurants and spend a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred dollars. Man, let me tell you something. I would not even I, if you want to talk about dating, I would not even date a woman who would even want me to take her to those places. Even if I wanted to. Even if I said, okay, we'll go here, I wouldn't even date a woman who'd be okay with that. Cause she knows it's not worth it. But when you're caught up in the world and not in the earth, see the world ain't the earth. The world is the people. The earth is the place, it's the resource. Man, let me tell y'all what I want y'all to do. I want y'all to start going places where you can get out and put your feet in the grass. Now, if you can't do it in your yard, don't do it in your yard now. Don't go nowhere where the land dirty and all that now. But man, you gotta go out, boy, go somewhere clean that you can put your feet in the grass. Put your feet on the ground and watch how electric the earth is. You understand? Put, that's why people used to go have picnics. People used to go have picnics in the grass because the grass is electric. Think about you look out, of, you look out into a field and grass is as far as the eye can see. You know how much nutrition it is? You know how much, you know how many minerals are in there? You know how much life is in that grass? Boy, that grass is electric. And we too busy around here trying to get far away from the grass. Man, life is a natural. It's a natural thing. Living life is a natural thing. The further you get away from the natural, the further you get away from your true self and the further you get away from the experience of living life and you just exist. And I'm gonna tell you, 
from the desperation to the deflection to the deniability to the delusion to the disdain to the demands that you find it so hard to meet to the details of those demands to finally seeing the domination to the distinction let me tell you something you gotta go hard because there are no discounts there is no level of this grind that you could just take some time off and still make progress there's no level of this grind where you can give less than optimal effort and still manage to succeed you got to go hard there are no discounts the only thing you got to pay with is your time and your grind and there are no discounts if you got to have 10 if you got to have 10 pesos of grind right there we ain't taking nine if you got to have 10 yen of dedication we're not taking 9.6 you have to go hard because there are no discounts on this grind you don't get discounted no time you don't get to take time off when somebody else is still grinding you don't get to take time off and then come back to where you were listen bro you don't get to put this load on your truck and get it halfway there and then leave my truck right there and then come back to work next week man to my web what can i get the next load? where my next load going boy you ain't got no more lows not in not this company your lows done you cannot take you got to be like a truck driver baby you 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 don't make progress unless the wheels turning shout out to my truck driver homies man listen boy i got thousands of truck driver partners man listen shout out to my truck driver partners man tell them what it is man if the wheels ain't turning Man, then them bills keep burning. I'm telling you, bro, if the wheels ain't turning, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't getting it. You got to keep the motion going, man. You got to keep it going. There is no time off, man. There is no time off. UK Prince say, except the Sabbath, the Sabbath is part of the work. You know what I'm saying? No days out but the Sabbath. Keeping the Sabbath is part of the work. Because you got to think about, you could do the work, but if the Most High ain't with you, your work don't mean nothing. So part of the work is making sure you're living a life that's pleasing to the Most High. That's why we do what we do with the Sabbath, because we want to live that life that's pleasing to God. We want to get that benefit of pleasing to God. Man, you want to keep them wheels turning, man. And that's the bottom line. You got to treat your life like a truck driver man you got to you got to be uh, uh you got to be in the logistics industry you got to keep it moving man you got to keep it moving you got to keep it moving and the reality of the situation is brothers there's a whole bunch of people out here that gonna look at you and say man what you're doing they're gonna look at you and say why you ain't focusing on this they're gonna look at you and say why you ain't talking about this the bottom line is one day we all gotta go and i promise you the most high ain't gonna never look at you and say, you know what, I'm proud of you. You made more money than everybody else. You had more cars than everybody else. You had better jewelry than everybody else. He ain't gonna look at you with that. He gonna look at you and see how you did on your path, how you did on your mission. Did you reach your final position? Did you try to always make the right decision? And did everything that you were supposed to do in your life come to fruition? And if the answer to most of those, or at the very best, all of those is yes, then you find grace in the sight of God, man. That's what this whole thing is about. Nothing matters more than peace of mind. And the key to peace of mind is to do exactly what God put you here to do. Are you going to be perfect? No, you're not going to live a perfect life. We still going to flip and do, and do things sometime. That's just who we are. We ain't trying to, but over the years knowing us, we know that sometime we're going to, you know, we're going we gonna, to we gonna do a thing or two. That has nothing to do with you being focused on your mission. You keeping the pace. You continuing to do what you're supposed to do. You grinding. You showing up every day. You know what I'm saying? You're putting in work every day. You're doing the thing that God put you here to do because that's the only thing that matters. If you're not doing that thing or if you don't know what it is, you got to do some soul searching. I can't tell you what it is. All I can tell you, here's the thing, and I want y'all to remember this. Part of the, I guess part of the, the, the demands issue is that you don't understand that 
30% of this is the work you have to do. All anybody else can do is give you some assistance and give you some information, but the work is up to you. Man, how do I type my relationship with God? You already know that. We've already talked about that. Do the work. Put in the work. Get on your grind. If, you, if you're asking that, then you, it's probably because you, you, know, you know you're doing things that you don't need to be doing. So if you ask me, how do I stop doing these things that I don't need to be doing? Just stop. Either you stop or you deal with the consequences and keep moving in life. But here's the problem with most people. You do something and that thing, it don't stop your life when you do it, but the consequences do. And you can't deal with the consequences. Now you're regretful about the consequences and you want somebody to help you. Well, if the consequences are that bad, don't do the action. Stay focused, brothers. Stay focused. Stay focused. That's all we have to do, man. Stay focused on your grind, on your shine, on your time. Keep that foolishness off your mind. And when the spirit of God, when God's spirit, when you get near it, you can hear it. And that's the goal for all of us. So listen, brothers, we're going to slide on out of here, man. I ain't going to hold y'all too long, man. Got a couple things to take care of, man, before we get to the next show, brother. I appreciate it. Salute to the brother, the brother Mr. O in the building. Salute to you, man. Salute to you. Let's get ready to slide out of here, man. Famo, SJ3. Salute. I saw Meadows in here too, man. Shout out to Meadows up in here. Let's get on out of here, man. Y'all put God first. Keep grinding the girl. Remember, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll be on the BOA channel. We got another bang-up show. How to know if you should let her go and how to keep her if she's worth keeping. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. Peace.